reviews, how-tos, and builds. He is the Redneck Computer Geek on YouTube. Hi, everyone. So today we're in the shop and we're going to be replacing the spindles for the blades on this LT2000 series. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that at one point, Craftsman decided to change the types of spindles that they have in, but their blades stayed the same, and there were other changes that ended up happening. So, the first part of this video, I'm going to teach you the different things to look for, but changing out the spindles is basically exactly the same on both series. Now, this particular model that we're looking at, and I'm going to post all of these notes at the end of the video, this particular model of Craftsman that we're looking at, is a 9172890081. Now, the way that you tell, the five second way that you tell, is you take a look at this front bar. If it has a singular front bar, it is the newer style with four. If you look at this and it has two tabs, and two bars running back, it's the triangle type with three. Now one thing to note about this is that both of these use the exact same blade holes. So any blade that you have will swap onto all of them. So don't be sold on the other stuff. Now, if you're dealing with this newer series, what Craftsman ended up doing was they took the pulleys that are on the top of the spindle and they actually increased the size of them. And the other thing that they did was they took the pulley on the motor and they increased that size slightly also. So you're going to have to look up your model number and find your belt size. If you're dealing with this particular series that has just a singular rod in the front, you're looking at a 101 inch belt. Um, the Craftsman model number on that is 429636. Yet again, these notes will be posted at the end. Now, if you're dealing with the four bolt spindle kit, like this one, you're looking for spindles marked 187292. If you're dealing with the three hole kit, then you're looking for 130794. So, I think that's enough babbling for now. Let's get into actually fixing these things. Now, I'm going to make a couple of notes here. The first of which is that getting the actual top spindle nut off is actually easier if the belt is on. Otherwise, if you have a chain wrench that you can put around that top pulley, it makes life easier. But most of the time you can do it just by holding the blade underneath the mower deck. So, the reason this is up is in order to make it easier for you, the viewer, to see. You do not have to lift this as high as I have, but it certainly makes life easier. So, we're going to pull this belt off. We're going to drop this bar so the whole assembly comes down to make it easier to get to and for you as the viewer to see. And then I'll show you what it is needs to be done next. Alright, so getting the belt off is a pretty simple situation. As long as you have decently strong hands, just grabbing one side and give it a tug and then pull it around is simple enough. Um, you can take this and pull it all the way off like such. It's not exactly necessary if you're doing this on the ground because it's not going to drop far enough to pull it all the way out. Where we're dropping the whole thing on a stand, we are going to pull it off because it'll be better for it later. I'll also include at the end of this video the way to run this belt so that it's easier for you. At this point, we're simply going to lift up on the deck while we pull this off and I'm currently wearing sandals, so let's see if I can chop my toes off on video. So before I go any further, I'm going to actually impact both of the blades off from underneath, and then we're going to drop it down the rest of the way. 
Alright, so we've got our electric impact. This is what I really recommend for doing these. And we're just going to take and put this on and go for it. These are 16 millimeter. Alright, so at this point we're going to pull the cotter pin and we're going to drop the front of the deck down and that will give us access to the spindles. Now when you come down you don't want to forcibly drop it, you want to slowly let it down so that you don't bend any of the lift arms in the back. What I recommend is putting the washer and the cotter back on and you can actually wedge it like that and it will stay out of the way. So from here we can see our belt runs. It runs back through the pulley, around the outside pulley, around the rear, into the other pulley and back out and around. Now Let's move on to actually getting spindles done. Alright, so from here we're going to work on dropping out our spindle. Yet again, we've got our electric impact. Uh-oh, it's not going to fit. Guess we're going to have to do this by hand. Maybe not. All we had to do was actually put the deck release down to the lowest position. So, let's get started again. Alright, so for this we're going to need a 22 millimeter and we're going to need a 13. This one being 22. Now if you're doing this by hand, then you probably want to go and have some sort of pipe wrench or a chain wrench or something like that for the pulley. If you're doing it with an impact, you should just be able to hold on to it. And there we go. Alright, unfortunately sometimes you have to get forceful with these. So this is a large three jaw puller. And you also can use a bolt puller through these. But at this point, we should be able to get it to come off like such. Alright, so at this point, we pull this up off. And this one here has really been hit a few times. So I will probably order a new one to put on later. But for now, we're going to reuse it. At this point, you can actually get to your four bolts that are underneath here. There's one, two, three, four. This one here can be kind of a pain because the brake is in the way. But still should come off pretty easy. And this is a 13 millimeter. And off we go. Now, you want to make sure to buy a kit that has these included because of what actually just happened on this one. There's actually aluminum in it where it ended up cutting into the original spindle. 
and when we went to take it off it actually took the aluminum thread right out of the spindle. Alright, so here we are with our new one that now doesn't make any noise when we spin it. So, I'm going to set that and line it up. We're going to reach in underneath. Direction doesn't really matter. So you got to hold it from underneath and put a couple in. Now what I would recommend is going from one side to the other and doing the one with the break right off the bat here because it seems that the brake assembly warps a little when you go to do this. So you want to get that threaded in good before you move any further. So from here you want to do the brake assembly one down through because that's the one that's going to be a pain. Alright, so at this point we want to throw our belt back into the system because it will make it easier. We're going to take our pulley, set it into the brake and press the brake over and drop it down the spindle. Whoa, wait, stop, don't listen to this idiot. He just messed up. Now, when you've got your spindle, you're going to pull your old spindle. If it's a factory one, on it, you're going to find this little tiny washer that's going to sit right there on top of your bearing. Then, you're going to have your pulley that goes on, and then you're going to have your large nut like so. Now in the aftermarket kits, if you don't have it and somebody did it wrong, what you're going to find is they're going to have a large washer like this, which fits on like that. Then, that goes on. Then, this goes on. Okay, now you can go back to listening to this moron. Now, if you have a grease fitting on here, you're probably going to need an extended 22 to fit. I just barely made it with this one. There we go. So now we put our belt back on, and from there we do the other side. We lift it back up and attach it. That's how you replace a spindle.